Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for football and basketball picks. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, it's the day of the fight. Timothy Bradley against Brandon Rios. And I believe the value in this fight lies with the underdog, Brandon Rios. I was expecting the line to change. <clears throat> it's a plus 350 for Brandon Rios, right? Bet 10 bucks to win 35 plus the 10 you bet. What they're telling you is that if these guys fought four and a half times, Brandon Rios would only win one of the four and a half. Don't you believe it? He's a live dog. I believe he's the side of the play you want to be on, hedged with either Bradley by decision or the over, right? Now, let's say this. <clears throat> let's get outside the box a little bit, right? In my opinion, Bradley's in a bad place emotionally. Understand, uh, these days, I do a lot of divorce work. I used to be a litigator, right? In litigation, everyone's tough. It's assumed no one cares about you. No one wants to hear about your relationships or what you had for breakfast. With divorce work, it's a little bit different. <clears throat> Suddenly, the client starts telling you the most intimate details of their life. You can tell when people are in pain because... They tell you a bit too much information, right? Timothy Bradley right now, in interview after interview, is wasting his time telling you about how his current trainer is better than his older trainer, the one who he won titles with, the one who he beat Manny Pacquiao with, right? Instead, we're hearing about how the trainer he barely met has conducted a much better camp, right? We're even hearing about how his wife is now his manager and how he's only paying 10%, right? That he's, or rather he's saving 10%, right? What we're not hearing about from Timothy Bradley is about what he's going to do in the ring, right? You as a sports fan should really be concerned about that. Because the opponent he's going to fight is going to be aggressive just like Ruslan Provotnikov was aggressive. Right? This opponent's going to be hunting him down. You remember how the Provotnikov fight ended. Right? Bradley goes down in that fight. Barely finishes the fight. Barely. Right? Not a lot of room for error. Now, let me say this. Here online, I believe I took Bradley over Juan Manuel Marquez. Bradley was able to get on his bike in that fight. He was able to move around the ring. He was able to, you know, outmaneuver Marquez. Now, if you look at the Manny Pacquiao-Rios fight, you're going to see Manny Pacquiao outmaneuvering Rios. Right? Rios has been beaten by guys who have used the entire ring. Okay. Fair enough. Rios also, if you go back through his history, has had a problem with the guy who knows how to strategically place a jab. Look at the Richard Abril fight. All of that's true. But those kind of fights require a lot of effort. Right? Bradley had to be working awfully hard to beat Marquez. And I'm just here to tell you that Rios right now has more foot speed than Juan Manuel Marquez, right? Rios is going to be more aggressive than Juan Manuel Marquez. Rios knows that Richland Probodnikov almost beat Bradley, right? In my opinion, Now's the wrong time to change trainers, 
Look, I know Teddy Atlas is a great trainer. I remember when Teddy Atlas trained Mike Tyson way back in the day. Look that up, right? I remember watching Teddy Atlas in the corner of Michael Moore when Moore won the heavyweight title, right? I know Teddy Atlas is an excellent trainer, but again, I wouldn't feel comfortable if the Patriots suddenly decided right before the Super Bowl to move on from Bill Belichick, even if they picked up Urban Meyer, even if they picked up Nick Saban, even if they picked up Mike Tomlin. Why? Because I know when the bullets start flying, Belichick and the, Bra uh, and the uh, Patriots and Brady know how to work together. Right? They've been in crisis before. Right? If the Patriots were to decide that they were going to move on from their head coach, I would hope that they would play some preseason games or play some bad teams before playing a big Super Bowl level opponent. Now here you have Timothy Bradley, distracted. Right? So distracted, he's worried about the X, not the current. Right? So distracted that He's telling you about the 10% he's saving. Think about that. He's distracted against a focused opponent who's one of the mentally toughest guy in the sport of boxing. I mean, I have no doubt, I mean no doubt, that if Brandon Rios were to have an eye close on him, he would still be going all out. He would still be aggressive. He would still be trying to win the fight. Right? Rios is the kind of guy who, you know, could have a gash on his forehead, blood streaming into his eyes. And he would still be trying to beat you. You know this personality type, right? We have to make hard judgments from the cheap seats when we're betting money. I'm just telling you that Brandon Rios is a guy with a great chin and with a warrior's mindset. This guy's going to be bringing it to Timothy Bradley. Bradley's not going to be able to knock him out. Let's stop kidding ourselves. Bradley's going to have to work. He's going to have to work hard. And he's going to be working with an unfamiliar trainer. Now, in this situation, even though time and time again here on this channel, I've said Bradley's one of the best pound for pound in the sport of boxing. All I'm saying is here he's fighting a real opponent. If you're going to give me three and a half to one odds, if the casino is going to say plus 350 because they need someone on the other side of the play, right? If all the casual gamblers are taking the favorite. And Vegas wants to, you know, make the underdog very attractive for some suckers to, you know, finance the transaction. Call me a sucker. I'll take the Brandon Rio side here. I'll hedge the play with Bradley by decision or, better yet, the over. Right? This way, if Rios wins and it goes over, I win both halves of the bet. Right? Why rule out that possibility? My point to you, though, is Rios is active. Rios is hungry. Rios is focused. Rios is going to be hyper aggressive. He has a great chin. If Bradley's going to try to win this fight on his back foot, this 30 plus year old is going to be working awfully hard. In a tough fight like this, to hear that a fighter has made a change in his corner, in my opinion, is a bit much. Let me tell you, too. I know Bradley in interviews has said, oh, my camp with Teddy is so much better than my camp with my earlier trainer. Okay, fair enough. Understand the differences scare me. Right? I don't want to hear that a team's doing it all different in preparing for the Super Bowl. 
right? I'm one of those who believes, hey, you've made it into the playoffs with a certain approach. You've had success with a certain approach. Let's play the biggest game of the year with the same approach, right? To me, it's too risky to have a winning formula and then to say, you know what? Coke is popular. Let's change the formula. Let's trot out new Coke, right? Some people are not going to like it. So, put me down on the Rio side of the ledger, right? I see either Rio's hunting down, Timothy Bradley. Bradley getting confused. Bradley in the ring thinking, wow, what would my old trainer do? Oh, what would Teddy do in this scene, right? I think Bradley's going to get confused. I think he's going to be flustered. Right? If the casino is going to pay me a plus 350, three and a half times even money, sign me up. Right? I like Rios to win the fight. My only concern, right? Hedged with the over. Right? This way, if Bradley wins by decision, I'm good. Right? I'm good. I've made previous videos on this fight. Check them out here on YouTube. Right? My only concern is that Rio showed up at the weigh-in .2 over, right? What that means, it's not that .2 is that big a deal, but what that means is he's going to have to run around the block, or he had to run around the block, or hop in a sauna, right, the day before the fight. That's not exactly the way you want a fighter spending the day before the fight. I want him thinking of his opponent, not thinking of the scale, right? So you should be aware of that. But let me also say it just highlights that these weight divisions in boxing are a bit of an optical illusion, right? Rios is a big man. He's even big for 147 pounds. Think about that, right? So... Just understand, Rios is going to be an aggressive bull, knowing that being an aggressive bull went a long way for Richland Provodnikov against Timothy Bradley. Right? Let me also point out, too, if Jesse Vargas was able to go 12 rounds against Timothy Bradley, in my opinion, Brandon Rios will be able to go 12 rounds against Timothy Bradley. So you're telling me that I have a guy with a great chin who's likely to go the distance against Timothy Bradley and who's likely to be the fighter on his front foot, and you're going to give me a plus 350? I'll take it. Bet accepted. Hedged with the over, or Bradley by decision. That's how I see it the day of the fight. Let me hear from you. Let me also say this too. Vegas has put out a bunch of fights, right? This fight, the Cotto fight, the Klitschko fight, that I feel are mispriced. People need to understand, though, that there isn't someone behind the curtain in Vegas who is making a decision on who's going to win the fight. That's not the way it works. What Vegas is interested in is the VIG, right? Because you bet 100, they pay you back 90. Right? That's typically how bets go. Right? So Vegas wants to make sure that both sides of the bet cancel each other out. So they're able to take home the VIG. Right? So whoever wins, they can take the money on the other side of the bet, pay off the winners, and keep the VIG. Right? So Vegas knows that you, the public, right now might be overvaluing Timothy Bradley against certain styles of fighters, right? What's the difference between Provodnikov and Brandon Rios, right? Both are offensive fighters. Both are in there to come forward on their front foot, right? Throw a lot of hard hooks, hunt you down. There are going to be very few rounds in this fight where Brandon Rios leaves his corner and decides, okay, let me be on my back foot. Let me just be defensive. Let me just dodge back here. Let me be low volume. Those rounds are going to be few and far between. Rather, Brandon Rios, like Provodnikov, is going to come out and say, okay, the next three minutes, 
I'm going to go to work. Brandon Rios is not a guy who takes breathers during rounds. He's not Bernard Hopkins. This is a guy who's going to make you work. This is like a quarterback going up against a big-time pass rush that's going to be there in the first quarter, that's going to be there in the fourth quarter. All I'm saying is you don't want to give that quarterback a new playbook right before he faces that pass rush. That's what's happened to Timothy Bradley. All right? Let me say this, too. In my own life, right, I can tell a client is hurting from a divorce when the guy keeps talking to me about his soon-to-be ex-wife, right? You almost want to say to the guy, hey, man, are you over her? You know, when the guy starts telling me, too, too often how much he wants to divorce, Right? At some point, you want to say to him, hey, man, I believe you the first time you told me. Are you sure now the hundredth time you're telling me about this, that you want this divorce? Right? Timothy Bradley's talking about his former trainer more than he's talking about his next opponent. Right? For me, the red flags are out. Right? I think you want to circle this fight on your betting card. Right? Just keep an eye on this fight. It's 10.22 a.m. here, West Coast time, November 7. I don't know what's going to happen in the next few hours, but let's just say what I do know is that Brandon Rios is going to enter the ring focused, ready, with one of the best trainers in the sport, Robert Garcia, in his corner, longtime trainer. Right? When the bullets start flying, Rios is going to go back to his corner and he's going to have a second set of eyes there that he knows, that he trusts, where the trust was built from years of experience together. Right? I believe the value here is with the underdog. I like Rios at plus 350. I like him at these odds. And I'll hedge the play with the over or with Bradley by decision. That's how I see it the day of the fight. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.